Memoization and caching are foundational concepts in programming that you need to understand if you want to understand the higher level concepts that build upon it, such as for example use memo and use callback in React or select us in Redux and much more. And this video is going to break down memoization for you with examples in JavaScript and in TypeScript. So what is memoization? Memoization is a programming technique where you can reduce the amount of computations so that you can speed up the performance of your app. And there are two types of memoization. First, you've got implicit caching, and second, you've got decorator functions. Implicit caching is when you build the memoization right into the definition of your function. So let's say you have a function called add that takes two numbers and adds them. You can rewrite this add function so it memoizes its result. If you want to code along, initialize a new NPM project, and then write a function called memoized add. In memoized add, you create a cache, which is typically a hash table or an object, where you store the result of function calls. Each entry uses the function's input as the key and the output as the value. Next, you return the memoized add function, which takes in two numbers a and b. Each unique combination of arguments corresponds to a key. Before executing the main logic, the function checks the cache using the current input as the key, and if the input is in the cache, it returns the cached result. If the input is missing in the cache, the function computes the result, stores it in the cache, and then returns the result. When you call the memoized add function, the result is stored together with its parameters. If you call it again with the same parameters, the result comes from the cache. If the parameters are new, the function computes the result again. When you run this code, you get 7, 7, 11, and 7. In languages that support higher order functions, you can use decorators to add memoization to a function without changing its core logic. Higher order functions are functions that take in functions and then return functions. If that concept is foreign to you, watch this video that explains higher order functions and lots of other concepts in depth. And then come back to this video and resume it. So, Let's look at an example where you can see how decorator functions can be used to add memoization to a function. Create a memoize function that takes another function fn as its argument. Start by initializing a cache using a map. This cache will store the results of the function calls. A map is used instead of an object because it can handle a wider variety of key types. The returned function accepts any number of arguments. It serializes these arguments into a string to use as a key for the cache. Before executing the original function, the wrapper checks if the key already exists in the cache. If it does, the function returns the cached result. If the key is missing in the cache, the wrapper calls the original function using fn.apply. It stores the result in the cache and returns it. You can now memoize your add function by passing it to the memoize function. The memoized add function will work just like in the implicit caching example. And running your code also yields the same result. The add function is computationally cheap. And to really experience the benefits of memoization, you want to use it on an expensive function. A classic example for that is the Fibonacci sequence. And it's very good if you know about the Fibonacci sequence because it's a common topic in interview questions. The Fibonacci sequence basically works by adding the two results of the previous function calls. So the sequence looks like this. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. In mathematical terms, f of 0 is equal to 0. f of 1 is equal to 1. And then f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. Here is what the Fibonacci function looks like in JavaScript. If n is 0 or 1, the function returns n directly. These are the first two numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. For values of n greater than 1, the function calls itself twice. Once for Fibonacci of n minus 1 and once for Fibonacci of n minus 2 and adds the results of these two calls. Here's a table showing the calculation of Fibonacci of 4. You can see that Fibonacci of 2 is calculated twice when calling Fibonacci of 4. Once directly from Fibonacci of 4 and again from Fibonacci of 3. The negative performance impacts of these redundant calculations compound as the input for the Fibonacci function grows. Watch this video till the end to learn how you can make these computations lightning fast even for very, very large numbers. Now, before you add memoization to your Fibonacci function, also make sure that if the function throws an error, you have proper stack tracing and you implement it like this. Use object.define property to set the name property of the memoized function to a more descriptive value, like memoized underscore function name, where function name is the name of your original function. By setting this property to be configurable, you allow further modifications or deletion of the property if necessary. 
Now you are ready to measure the performance impact of memoization. Memoize your Fibonacci function and then measure how long it takes to compute very large numbers. Now create a measure performance function that evaluates and reports the execution time of a given function by capturing start and end times with process hrTimeBigin, which provides precise timestamps in nanoseconds. After executing the function with a given argument, it calculates the duration in milliseconds by subtracting the start time from the end time and converting the result from nanoseconds. It then locks out the function name, argument, output and execution duration to the console. Now you can compare the execution times for the memoized function and the raw Fibonacci function. By the way, real quick, this video is sponsored by my company React Squad and if you need to hire senior React developers, click the link in the description now. Here are the results of the performance measurements. As you can see, running the memoized version the second time is instant because the result is retrieved from the cache. When you implement memoization, you also want to implement a .clear method to manage your application's resources. Here's why. First, memory management. It allows you to free up resources by manually purging your cache. Second, data freshness. It allows your cached results to stay accurate by removing outdated or incorrect data. Number three, it gives you control over your caching behavior so that you can purge or clear your cache based on certain events or conditions that affect your data processing. Number four, testing and debugging. It allows you to operate on your code in a known state without interfering from previously cached results so that your code stays reliable in testing and debugging. And number five, performance optimization. The clear method maintains efficiency by allowing you to do periodic resets of your size and lookup costs. Now implement the .clear method in your memoize function. In its implementation, you simply call the .clear method on your map. Then modify your usage example to include a call to the .clear method after your result has already been memoized successfully. As you can see, clearing the cache causes a recomputation of the result. All of the examples you've seen so far were written in JavaScript. Now it's time for you to translate them into TypeScript. So install TypeScript and the node types. Then initialize a new TypeScript project. Now you can write your memoize function in TypeScript. Create an any function type, which represents a generic function type in TypeScript. This type is flexible and allows for any function that takes an arbitrary number of arguments of any type and returns any type. Next, define a generic memoize function interface that extends the built-in callable function interface and introduces a clear method. Here, t is a generic parameter constrained to any function that matches the any function type. The interface ensures that your memoized function behaves like the original function in terms of accepting the same parameters and returning the same type and additionally exposes the clear method. Now you can implement your memoized function so that it returns the memoized function interface. Using the as keyword you can let TypeScript know that the returned function is a memoized function. Now when you hover over the memoized Fibonacci, TypeScript knows the correct type of the function. And TypeScript also knows about the .clear method on the memoized function. Your function still has a shortcoming because right now it only memoizes the full calculation of your function, but you are not memoizing the intermediary steps of your recursive function. And what is the potential drawback of using recursion and memoization together? Well, if you're not memoizing the intermediary steps, then it is a significant waste of computation and time due to the redundant calculations. Call your function with a big number n, for example 42, and then with a bigger number n plus 1. As you can see, Fibonacci of 43 takes much longer because it recalculates Fibonacci of 42 from scratch, even though the result is already cached. The same problem occurs with every other intermediate recursive call. You can fix this by using memoization in the implementation of your Fibonacci function. When you define the Fibonacci function, use its memoized version to calculate the next number. Now run the function on various large numbers. The calculations are now virtually instant, no matter how large the number is. And when you memoize, you want to ask yourself, what do you even want to memoize? Do you only want to memoize the outer function? Or do you also want to memoize all the intermediary steps in your calculation? And another important question for you is, when do you want to memoize? There are five different use cases. First, recursive algorithms. As shown with the Fibonacci sequence, recursive functions that repeat the same calculations can benefit greatly from memoization by avoiding redundant operations. Second, database queries. You can cache results from expensive database queries. Number three, data fetching. 
In web development, memoization can cache responses from API calls. This reduces network traffic and speeds up response time by serving cache data for repeated requests with the same parameters. Number four, data transformation. You can cache results of transformations that are costly in processing time. And number five, preventing component re-rendering. In front-end frameworks like React, memoization can prevent unnecessary re-renders of components as long as their props stay the same. As you've learned, memoization improves the performance of your app by reducing the time complexity and cutting down the number of computations for expensive calculations. But there are also drawbacks that you need to be aware of. Number one, memoization increases memory consumption by storing function call results, which can be a problem in environments with limited memory. Number two, adding memoization introduces complexity to your code base and requires careful cache management to avoid bugs and maintainability issues. Number three, you must implement strategies for cache eviction and invalidation to prevent outdated or incorrect data, which can be challenging. Number four, functions with side effects can be problematic for memoization because the side effects might need to occur with each function call. You want to use memoization primarily with pure functions. And number five, in multi-threaded applications, memoization must be handled carefully to avoid race conditions and ensure threat safety when accessing the cache. I love you very much. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm. Subscribe if you learned something and then go watch this video in front of my face right now, which explains to you how you can use memoization in React for use callback and use memo.